V. Anton Sprawl here with another video about how you can learn to think like a programmer. In this video, we're going to be talking about divide and conquer. This is a specialization of the basic recursive algorithm idea. Now, I have a whole other video about how recursion works and how you can learn to write recursive functions. So I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But the basics of recursion is this. It's a function that makes a call to itself with a smaller problem and then handles the whole problem based on that result. Now, the most common recursive idea, which is what I go over in the other video, is when you have a data collection, such as an array, with, let's say, n items. You make a recursive call to process all but one of those items and then process the collection as a whole based on that result. Here's a sample function using this idea. This function finds the largest value in an array of integers. As you can see, we handle the so-called base case at the start of the function. If the array size is one, then there's really nothing to do. There's only one item in the array, and we return that as the largest value. Otherwise, we make a recursive call now, we can't change the size of the array in C++ the way you could in, say, Python, but we can change the value of the argument that specifies the size of the array. Here, we knock off one from that size, and effectively, we're asking the recursive function to process an array that is one member smaller. So that should return the largest value of the array except for the last element. So we compare that largest value against the value in the last element and return whichever one is larger. The divide and conquer idea does things a little differently. Instead of dividing the array into the last piece of data or one piece of data and everything else, we split the problem in half. So here's the same problem, but solved using the divide and conquer idea. As you can see, we've had to change the parameters. Now we have the array itself, but instead of just specifying the size of the array, we specify the start and ending location within the array that we're going to uh, have under investigation. The base case here is if those two values are equal. If the start and ending locations are equal, again, there's only one item in the array, and that's the largest value. Otherwise, we find the midway point between the starting and ending point in the array using uh, the basic average of the two. Then we make recursive calls to find the largest value in the left half of the array and in the right half of the array. It's important that we store these values in local variables rather than making the recursive calls uh, twice. If we made the recursive call both times we used the value we're storing in left, or both of the times we're accessing the value in the variable right, we'd make so many extra recursive calls uh, that the program would be horribly inefficient. But once we have the largest value from the left side of the array and the largest value from the right side of the array, we simply return whichever one is larger. So the question is, what's the benefit of using the divide and conquer algorithm? In this case, there is no benefit at all. The divide and conquer version is more complicated than the first version, and it's not any more efficient either. So why use divide and conquer at all? Well, we should use this technique for problems that allow you to get twice as far in one step. And here's the sample problem we're going to look at. Exponentiation, which is to say computing x to the power of y. Example here is 3 to the power of 8, and that's just 3 times 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 3. 6,561. Now we can compute that 
using a standard recursive process. That is, we could compute 3 to the power of 8 as 3 times 3 to the power of 7. Here's code that does just that. Our arguments here are the exponential base and the power. If the power equals 0, we return 1. As uh, you may recall, uh, any base to the power of 0 is 1. Otherwise, we return the base times the recursive call, where we're passing power minus 1 as the second argument. Problem with this solution is it requires the maximum number of multiplications. That is, computing x to the power of y requires y minus 1 multiplications. We can actually do a lot better than that by using the power rule. So 3 to the 8th, as we said, it's 3 times 3, you know, th 3 multiplied by itself 8 times. But you can think of this as 3 to the 4 times itself. 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 4. What that means is, if we compute 3 to the power of 4 using our exponent function and we stored the result, we could compute 3 to the power of 8 in just one more step. So here I'm showing some pseudocode basically. Half pow equals exponent 3 comma 4. Full pow equals half pow times half pow. More generally, we can compute x to the power of y as x to the power of y divided by 2 times itself. Now one concern is, what if y is odd? We can handle that with an extra multiplication. So for example, 3 to the power of 7 can be computed as 3 to the power of 3 times itself times 3 to get the 3 to the power of 7 result. And here's a function which implements that idea. Again, if power is 0, we can immediately return 1. Otherwise, we make a recursive call, passing power divided by 2 as the second argument. Store that result in half pow, and then we multiply that by itself and store it in full pow. Now we check to see whether or not the power is odd, and if it is, we do an extra multiplication times the base. Again, that's like multiplying 3 times the power of 3 by itself times 3 to get 3 to the power of 7. And then we simply return full pow. Now that works, but is it efficient? Well, if it, a power of 2 exponent, it's very efficient because it splits perfectly all the way down the line. So if we start with something like x to the power of 16, We'll compute that as x to the power of 8 times itself, which is x to the power of 4 times itself, which is x squared times itself, which is x times itself. But if we start with something like x to the power of 15, 15 being 1 less than a power of 2, well, that becomes x to the power of 7 times x to the power of 7 times x. So that's an extra multiplication right there, but x to the 7th is also odd. So that be results in another extra multiplication, and so on. Now that's still more efficient than the first implementation we looked at, but it's not a huge savings, uh, especially when power is relatively small. Also note that each recursive call involves a division. We're dividing power by 2 when we're passing that as the second argument. There's ways we could make that division more efficient. We could use bit shifting in C++, but still, we're doing extra divisions to avoid extra multiplications. I might consider a non-recursive implementation. One of the problems with any recursive implementation is the overhead of the recursive calls. So if we can eliminate those recursive calls, and carry forth the idea of the recursive version in a non-recursive implementation, well, that can be a, a highly efficient solution. Uh, in this case, we might think, well, we can compute from the bottom up. For instance, uh, if we wanted to compute x to the power of 11, we could compute x squared, x to the fourth, x to the eight, uh, and then from there go up singly, x, x to the ninth, x to the tenth, x to the eleventh. And here's a function I wrote to implement that idea. 
I'm going to tell you right now, this function is pretty crusty. I mean, I don't like it. And part of the reason I don't like it is that it took much longer to write than the other functions. And it's got a special case right at the beginning, even though it's not a recursive function, it's not a base case. But even so, I found it easier to write the processing loop if I cut out this base case, this a special case right at the beginning of power equals zero. Then I can initialize product to the exponential base. I have another variable current pal, which is going to double until it reaches the specified power argument. But uh, I need to actually stop it uh, before it goes over power. And since I'm doubling, uh, I have to check that by multiplying current pal times two in the while loop conditional. And this is bad already because I'm doing an extra multiplication every time I go through the loop. Inside the loop, I multiply product by itself. So again, this is where we're doing the doubling up of the exponents. When that's done, I handle whatever single multiplications times the base are needed using a straightforward for loop. So it works. It does implement that idea. And it's better than a straightforward implementation. If power is large, then yeah, this is going to use a lot fewer multiplications than the straightforward uh, exponentiation function we started with. Uh, but it's going to use a lot more multiplications than divide and conquer recursion. Partly bec that's because of what I was saying just a second ago, where we have to multiply current pal times two for use in the while condition. But also it's simply that we're not doing the same multiplications we would in the divide and conquer algorithm. In divide and conquer, to compute something to the power of 15, for instance, only requires six multiplications. The way we would do it here, we would do four multiplications to get up to the eighth power, and then we would sequentially do 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We would do those sequentially, and that would give us a total of 10 multiplications. Again, that's better than 14, which is what we would do in a straightforward implementation, but it's not anything to get excited about. So the question is, is there some way we could do just the, those multiplications we did for the recursive divide and conquer? Yeah, I think you could, uh, but it's not easy and maybe less efficient. I did come up with a solution for that, but it's so convoluted, I don't even want to get into it. That said, you should keep your eye out for ways to make non-recursive versions of the divide and conquer algorithm. Because overall, divide and conquer can produce solutions that are elegant and efficient. It does have the issues that all recursion has, though, and that's, again, the overhead of the recursive calls. So it's only effective when we can see a way to get twice as much result from one more step of work. You know, a few of the well-known divide and conquer algorithms, binary search, merge sort, and loosely speaking, quick sort is a divide and conquer algorithm, but it doesn't uh, generally divide the work up in half. It approximately does that, but the actual division is based on uh, the values themselves in the data set. Merge sort is a good example of a function that can be written recursively, but can also be written uh, without using recursion uh, and without sacrificing any of the efficiency of the recursive version. So that's a basic introduction to divide and conquer. I urge you to try it out yourself. Um, and the easiest way to try it out uh, is with a ar full array processing problem, something that you can easily process without using recursion that you can then maybe step up and use you know, a standard recursive solution, one where you make a recursive call to process all but one of the elements in the array and then solve the overall problem with that result, and then use a divide and conquer solution. Now, it's likely that any problem that meets these criteria is one that's not going to especially benefit from a divide and conquer solution.
but it will teach you the mechanics of how divide and conquer solutions are written. Then, when you do find a problem that can be solved using divide and conquer beneficially, that is one in which you can double the amount of work in one step, you'll know the mechanics and can apply the algorithm easily. Well, I hope this helps. I plan to follow this video up with another one on Divide and Conquer's Tricky Pal dynamic programming. Until then, uh, please do like or subscribe if this video was helpful, and feel free to make suggestions for other videos in the comments. Thanks.